Okay, let's get started with auditing. Now, obviously, again, I lack some of that technology to do a proper virtual class, I guess is the right way we could, uh, is the proper way we could call this, but well, you just got to go along with me with the slides. Imagine the slides are up here. I'm going to be reading from the textbook and reading from the slides, which, again, you do have uh, have access to. So we're going to look at Chapter 7, okay? Uh, and Chapter 7 deals with understanding and testing a client's system of internal control. So remember, when we go back to talking about internal control, controls if we can test those controls and we can rely on those controls we can do less testing okay analytical testing so we're going to define internal control we're going to state the seven generally accepted object uh, accepted objectives of internal control activities describe the elements of internal control at the entity level Identify the different types of controls, explain how to select and design tests of controls, explain the different techniques used to document and test internal controls, understand how to interpret the results of testing of controls, and explain how to document these tests of controls. Okay, so again, follow along in the textbook. Now Let's look at page 7-4, internal control defined. Okay. So when we look at internal controls, it encompasses the entity's resources, systems, processes, culture, structure, and tasks. Okay. So when controls are effective, the entity is more likely to achieve its strategic and operating objectives. Why? Well, because these controls are in place. So when you have proper control, then you just run uh, a little bit more smooth. Okay? So the auditor is going to focus on controls with a direct impact on the entity's financial reporting, compliance, and asset safeguard. If we don't have those controls, we can't rely on them. That's going to be an issue. So internal control is the process designed, implemented, and maintained by those charged with governance, management, and other personnel to provide reasonable assurance about the achievement of the entity objectives with regard to reliability, financial reporting, effectiveness, and efficiency of operations and compliance with applicable laws and regulations. This is Canadian Audit Standard 315. Uh, it's just run-on sentence after run-on sentence. Typical of, uh, of those standard setters out in Toronto, uh, just, again, I, I'm not going to get into my issues with them. But again, we need to understand internal control. Why? Because it's a key component of overall audit risk. Okay. So let's look at our objectives of con internal control. Okay. So is an entity's internal control effective as it relates to recording of transactions and balances? So the effective internal control meets the following objectives. Real. So there's no fictitious or duplicated transactions. So the assertions that we can focus on for this would be occurrence, rights, and obligations, and existence. So again, we want to make sure that those transactions are real. Now, recorded, there are controls in place that will prevent or detect the omission of transactions from the books and records of the organization. So what assertions are we going to hit there? Accuracy, completeness, and valuation and allocation. Okay. Now, value. We want to make sure there's controls in place to ensure the correct amounts are assigned to these transactions okay so yeah it's great that we've recorded the transaction but we also got to be there we've recorded that transaction at the correct amount okay not not the wrong amount or again if it's at the wrong amount we're making a sale but not what the amount should be 
Now we're going to look at classification. Are these transactions charged to the correct account? So there we're going to hit the assertions of accuracy, valuation, allocation, and classification. Okay. Summarization. Are there controls in place to ensure the transaction in the books and records are summarized and totaled properly? Okay. That's going to be accuracy, valuation, and allocation. Six, posting, okay? We want to be sure that the controls are in place to ensure the accumulated totals in the transaction file are correctly transferred to the general and subsidiary ledgers. Again, the assertions that we're going to hit there are accuracy, valuation, and allocation, and classification. And we need to be sure that we have timeliness, okay? Or not timeliness per se, but just the time factor where the controls are in place to ensure transactions are recorded in the correct accounting period. And this is going to hit the assertion of cutoff and completeness. So the auditor is going to aim to gain an understanding of how the client uses internal controls to meet these objectives. Okay, this is all the interview process that we're going to test. Focusing on objectives helps the auditor select controls for testing to gain the greatest assurance that controls are operating effectively, but the failure of an entity's controls to meet any of these objectives is a weakness in internal control. So we've got to be aware of all this uh, information that we've been given. Now, all internal control systems have inherent limitations. We talked about inherent risk. The risk that there's going to be errors uh, due to various errors, control risk, the risk of the control mechanisms that we have in place aren't going to attach those inherent uh, mistakes that we're making. So all internal control systems have inherent limitations, human error results in control breakdown, ineffective understanding of the control's purpose, collusion by two or more individuals. We can't avoid collusion. If two people want to get together to collude or to steal, there's nothing we can really do about it. Okay? Hopefully we have a control in place, but we might not. We want so software programs, controls being overridden or disabled. We don't want that. We don't want every, anyone to be able to go in there and override a control or o override program software. Management decisions about nature and extent of controls being implemented, okay, uh, that might be an issue there too, where management goes in and make a decision but it's, it's wrong, right? That, that internal control just is not there. Okay? So that's, that's review. That gets up, us up to page 7 and 6. Okay? And that will help us to do one of the questions that were assigned. I'm just looking through the textbook here. Uh, we can, ex we can ex answer 7 1. 7 2 we can answer as well because we've just gone over that. Now, let's go to entity level internal controls. Okay, it's a long one. So, entity level internal controls potentially impact all entity processes. So, it comprises one, the control environment. So, the control environment starts on page seven. Seven. And I'll just let you read that on your own. Okay, because, again, I don't want to take up too much time on this video. But the control environment uh, looks at culture, structure, and discipline of an entity. Okay. Two, we want to look at the entity's risk assessment process. So how does the entity identify and respond to business risk? Okay, the auditor is interested in how management identifies, analyzes, and manages the risk to risk relevant to financial reporting, and how the risk might impact the audit. Uh, page 711, information systems and communication. These are designed to capture and exchange information to conduct managing control and entities operations. Okay. Four, we want to look at control activities. 
Okay, and these are entity based, entity level based. Okay. Do they have performance reviews? Okay, so an example, are we comparing actual to budget? Are they investigating those differences? Is there information processing? Is it manual or automated? Who has authorization of these controls? Control activities. Again, policies and procedures that may help make sure management's directives are carried out. Okay, so we, do we do account reconciliations, physical controls, so that security of assets and records? Okay. Is there a segregation of duties? Okay. Monitoring controls. Does management monitor controls and modify as required when conditions change? So we can't just go set up the control and leave it. All is great. No, we have to continuously review this stuff. Now, what about internal controls and small entities? A lot of times, small entity is so small that you might not have internal controls. So it's difficult to implement formal controls, that segregation of duties, why? Because we rely so much on the owner who is often the boss, the manager. They're involved heavily in the daily business. As a result, okay, they are there to oversee. They are that ultimate control. So the auditor must make an overall assessment of the effectiveness of these entity level controls. So that wraps up what I wanted to get to the first 16 pages. Okay. That's enough information between the textbook. Obviously, I haven't said too much more than what is just on the text in the textbook for now, uh, just because we have a limited amount of time. I want to get through this, but uh, I'm going to post this now. That's enough information again to go forward and do the three or four questions that uh, I told you to look into. And again, use your textbook uh, again with the information. As far as tomorrow's class goes, that's mostly going to be a work period. Uh, I want you to get those exams done. Okay, so I'm going to sign off now, and uh, if I don't talk to you tomorrow, have a good weekend, and we will see you on Monday.